Hello, my name is Sai Amanur. Uh, today I'm going to talk about tracking personal health um, during the pandemic. This is a pre-recorded talk. I chose to record my talk because of um, time zone differences. Uh, I have included my contact information in the last slide. Um, please do get in touch with me if you have any questions about today's talk. I really hope you enjoy this talk. A little bit about myself. I'm an IoT applications engineer at Lindy in Buffalo, New York. In case you have not heard of Lindy, Lindy is an industrial gases company and you have probably used Lindy's products um, in your life if you have ever consumed a fast food, uh, excuse me, if you have ever uh, consumed a beverage, a carbonated beverage at a fast food restaurant or a helium balloon or purchased a helium balloon at a party supply store. Uh, in my free time, I like to build uh, products that help improve my quality of life. Um, I like to share my projects at Maker Fairs across the country. And I'm also recognized by Intel as an IoT innovator. A little bit about Designably. Um, uh, my brother and I started this nonprofit to build low cost open source products um, that could be, uh, you know, um, used by uh, people uh, with chronic health conditions and uh, we uh, you know we strive to uh, develop products that could be easily built by others and improved upon um, we do this uh, you know uh, we remotely collaborate um, on these projects uh, and uh, time to time we um, you know we include uh, external partners um, on some of these um, projects and today I'm going to share about uh, the, some of the stuff we built um, during the pandemic. Um, our process is basically uh, we try to identify problems in our immediate surroundings. Um, we uh, take it forward with a prototype. Uh, we try to uh, improve upon um, uh, each uh, generation of the prototype and we uh, publish the designs in various conferences as well as you know uh, make them available um, through our github uh, repositories um, now why did we pick uh, personal health um, we come from a family that actually struggles with uh, you know that actually um, has gone through uh, chronic health conditions through several generations and we desire and um, since my brother and i are both engineers we wanted to um, um you know give back to the community uh by uh, building products um that help people with uh, chronic health conditions um like you know keeping track of uh, uh you know uh, like you know helping people with chronic health conditions is something uh, very personal to both my brother and myself um, so we actually, a couple of years ago, we actually built this personal health dashboard using a Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, so this um, personal health dashboard was basically built using a shadow box from an arts and crafts store. Um, and we used a, we used an eight, um, uh, you know, we used an RGB LED strip and a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, where we collected um, like our physical activity data from our um, uh, from our uh, you know wearable uh, wearable you know uh, trackers uh, uh, app uh, and um, uh, you know and light up uh, uh, the LEDs of this uh, strip like a progress bar. So as we make um, pro like as we walk a thousand two steps 50 step for every thousand to 50 steps we walk uh, uh, the uh, led lights up green in color so there are a total of eight leds so it lights up as you make progress and once you hit the daily um, step go the entire rgb strip is green in color um, so we built this um, uh, uh, dashboard to uh, you know to motivate ourselves to stay physically active and we wanted to improve upon this design where we decided to build this giant seven segment display using five um, seven segment digits. And uh, we did several experiments with this display where initially we were counting up to our daily step go. We found out that it 
doesn't exactly give us an idea of um, the level of physical activity um, required on a slow day for example so we decided to count down from our daily step go um, so that actually you know gives you an idea of like you know how long should you walk um, should you mix up your um, uh, um, uh, the um, your uh, physical activity um, so that you hit your daily step go um, sooner uh, this uh, display actually sits in my living room serving as a stark reminder that I should get up and, you know, uh, walk around for a little bit. Then the COVID pandemic hit where we, are, we were all pushed into a strange world where we had to conduct daily temperature screenings, um, you know, monitor for symptoms. For example, my workplace required that I conduct um, daily uh, temperature screenings um, that's when we came up with the idea of building a non-contact thermometer based um, screening station um, uh, in this uh, picture here you can see a raspberry pi interface to a camera and a tower light and a, um, a thermal sensor so the idea here is that when a person is um, you know comes into in front of the camera uh, the IR uh, grid sensor is used um, to uh, conduct the temperature screening and it gives a go, no go decision based upon the temperature measured. Um, this sensor is somewhat um, affected by, uh, you know, external environment conditions. So uh, based upon the room temperature, it, the, the temperature measured uh, could be higher or lower. So the best you could do is, you know, whether, uh, detect whether or not um, uh, a person has fever. Now, this is not good enough uh, because, you know, uh, the body temperature varies from person to person that actually uh, motivated us to go find a variable uh, you know to go build a variable um, that could actually measure body temperature uh, we came across this uh, uh, contact thermometer sensor called the max 30205 so we built a very small variable device that can actually provide body temperature measurements uh, you know with uh, with uh, that's rated for clinical accuracy. Even with this sensor, there is a shortcoming because, you know, um, body temperature measurement is best, uh, you know, is accurate when you uh, actually conduct these measurements either under your armpit or like, you know, um, uh, on your fingertips. Uh, you know, there are only certain parts of your body um, where, uh, temp like um, external temperature measurements are uh, comes close to uh, uh, the uh, comes really close to the um, accurate measurement but that you know that is good enough like you know that that actually provides a sense of whether or not you are running a fever this um, uh, contact thermometer actually uh, you know uh, like it, it comes really close to um, the uh, clinical grade thermometer sensors. Um, so we decided to actually improve on this design where we built a, uh, a, a, you know, a second generation of this design where we actually added a Bluetooth module um, to the variable so that you could automatically record your daily temperature measurement. Um, so whenever you conduct, uh, you know, um, a temperature measurement, the, uh, the data is automatically pushed um, to your uh, smartphone. Now, as a part of, uh, you know, um, so the, for the past year, we have also been, um, we all have been working from home and a re research has shown that, you know, in order to stay healthy, you have to make sure that, uh, you know, your indoor air quality, um, uh, you know, is at a, um, at a, is at a healthy level. So we actually purchased various 
um, indoor air quality sensors and we built, um, uh, you know, we worked on uh, various projects around monitoring indoor air quality. So for example, on the left here, we have used a Raspberry Pi Zero to interface it to a, um, a VOC sensor that constantly monitors the equivalent carbon dioxide levels in the room and it changes its color. There is the RGB LED um, that's interfaced to the Pi Zero um, changes its color um, according to the uh, measured um, uh, carbon dioxide levels in the room. Now we also wanted to see like, you know, um, what is the air quality in different rooms at different times of the day. So we built this battery powered device um, that could be connected to any I squared C based, um, uh, any sensor that comes with an I squared C uh, interface um, and it could, it could run without having, without needing a battery change for several years. Um, so this is an active experiment where we have installed uh, multiple uh, sensor nodes around the house and we are collecting data and we plan to uh, publish this information once we have further um, refined this um, design. So these are um, the various things that my brother and I, um, you know, uh, collaborate um, and uh, work together. We uh, publish all of our designs in our GitHub um, repo. Uh, and if you do have any questions, uh, please um, get in touch with me uh, at my email address, yamanursai at gmail.com. Uh, I hope uh, you have enjoyed today's talk. Thank you.